Hi, I'm Priyanka Varkaria, and this is AI Simplified, where we learn to make our data useful. In this video, we are predicting the future. That sounds like I'm an astrologer, but not really. We are going to predict a different kind of future influenced by data. Yeah, you're right. We are covering forecasting models, what they are, and how to create them in Vertex Forecast. But before we dive into it, what are some of the applications of forecasting? Say you're a retailer and you need to predict product demand or sales. Or you're a call center manager and you're predicting the call volume to hire more representatives. You're a hotel chain predicting hotel occupancy for next season. Or you're a hospital and forecasting bed occupancy. You get the idea. Forecasting datasets come in many shapes and sizes. There are univariate datasets where we observe a single variable over a period of time. For example, you can think about weather data or airlines data. Even though it's just one variable, sometimes this is all that you need to forecast your data into the future. You can see clear patterns, the seasonal peaks, and also the trends in that data. More often, we are faced with multivariate data sets where you have historical observations of the variables you're forecasting and other related time series. These are often referred to as covariance, and covariance because the value varies with the target variable. These related time series can be very helpful to forecast your target variable. And maybe, for example, you're plotting rain versus umbrella sales versus Uber rides. Now, we all know how taxis can be hard to get when it suddenly starts to rain. So as an owner of a taxi company, I can use the weather forecast to anticipate the higher demand in my cars and bring the cars online. Be aware that not all covariants are useful, even if they correlate strongly with your target variable. Some common examples of covariants used in retail forecasting are holidays, third-party forecasts, such as weather, and you can have planned promotions, foot traffic to the stores, and so on. Up next, we are going to look at forecasting algorithms. Now, here are the algorithms we can use for forecasting. The most popular methods today are statistical methods, which are also called as classical methods. There are many types of statistical models, including ARIMA models, that are being used for most popular use cases. Now, Google offers an advanced ARIMA Plus model with BQML, which is BigQuery ML. The other class is machine learning models like various tree-based methods and neural networks. Now, these deep learning models have been gaining a lot of popularity for forecasting applications over the past few years. Now, obviously, there's still a lot of debate on when to apply which methods, but it's becoming increasingly clear that neural networks are here to stay for forecasting applications. These methods perform fairly well across a broad range of forecasting problems, and particularly well when dealing with forecasting newer item demands. And these are called cold starts. And forecasting cold starts on items with limited or varying historical data. Now, deep learning models cross-learn across very large groups of related time series with varying lengths and missing data. The good news is that you don't really need to know exactly which architecture to use because Vertex Forecast does that for you. Now, we can build forecasting models in Vertex using advanced AutoML algorithms for neural network architecture search. Now, we automated the pre-processing of your time series data and instead of fumbling into data types and transformations, you can just load your data into the data set in Vertex AI, and AutoML would automatically apply those common transformations and even engineer features for you and required, required for modeling. Now, most importantly, we could evaluate hundreds of models in parallel to find the right architecture for your particular data set. And this requires a lot of computational resources, but because we can run all these trials in parallel, we're still able to find the best model and tune it to your particular data set in the fraction of time it typically takes for a traditional method. And of course, we can assemble the best model and together to ensure the model is stable across a wide range of predicted outputs. Now, how does all this work? Let's jump into the console and see. 
From our Vertex AI dashboard, we create a new tabular data set. We can see there is an option for forecasting. You may be curious if you can apply a regression model to your time series data. Now, the difference between them is that regression and classification, the target's predicted value depends only on the values of the feature columns in the same row. Now, in forecasting, the target's predicted value also depends on the context values of the target and the features. Now, we will see more on this further in the demo. In regression and classification problems, the output is one value. But as you can imagine, in forecasting problems, the output is a sequence of values. Now, let's select forecasting here and proceed. We are using the Iowa Liquor Sales public data set available in BigQuery. Now, it consists of wholesale liquor purchases in the United States state of Iowa since 2012. And we can preview this data here. For the purpose of this demo, I have already done some basic data pre-processing to group the purchases by day. And we will use a CSV extract from the BigQuery table. Now, back in our data set, let's import the data from our cloud storage bucket. You can also upload the data directly from your computer or BigQuery table here. Once the data is imported, we can configure the model features. Now, time series identifier column is to specify what time series a row belongs to. Now, every unique combination of key values defines a different time series. For example, here in ID is our time series identifier. Now, if we need to forecast on multiple time series, such as product and store levels, both of those could be used as keys. Now, time column is the identifier, such as date or days, etc. Why? is our sum of purchases that day. And holiday is a Boolean to indicate a holiday. Then we can train the model. Select the target column. This is the value we are predicting. So in our case, it is sales or the Y column. We've already set our time series identifier and the time column. So next, we need to set the data frequency. I'm selecting hourly here and setting the forecasting horizon to 7. This specifies the number of periods that the model can predict into the future. Now, historical context window I'm setting to 30 hours here. This means that the model will use data from previous 30 hours to make a prediction. There are trade-offs between shorter and longer windows and generally selecting a value between one to five times the forecasting horizon is recommended. Now let's check the box to export test data set to BigQuery. We can leave it blank and it will automatically create a data set and table in our project within BigQuery. Now in the training options, we can specify more details about how we would like to train the model. Set these columns to available for new forecast because we know this information already. Change the optimization objective to MAE or mean average error, which is more resilient to outliers. And because we are working with daily purchase data that can have wild fluctuations, MAE is an appropriate metric to use here. Before we initiate the training, set a budget. In this case, one node hour is sufficient to train the model. Now, once the model is trained, we can evaluate it and go to BigQuery console to view the predictions on test data. A new data set is automatically created where we find the evaluated data items table to review the predictions. This table has a couple new columns here. The predicted on date column, which is the date that the predictions were made, and predicted Y column is the predicted sales value. Now, finally, we would want to use your model to make predictions. We have an input file in the CSV format on cloud storage, and it contains empty values for the dates to be predicted along with the historical data. After it is complete, we can click on the batch prediction job to view the details, including the export location. We sent our predictions to BigQuery, which we can see here. And the job creates two different files or tables. One contains any rows with errors, and the other contains predictions. Lastly, now that we have our batch predictions ready, we can evaluate our forecasts in Data Studio, which is Google's free data visualization tool. 
The blue line shows my historical values and the red lines are my forecast. Now, looks like the model picked up on quite a bit of signal in the data. Okay, so in this video, we learned about forecasting models, what they are, and how to create them in Vertex Forecast. Give this a try yourself and send me your questions in the comments below.